David here with Fig Boot on Pens. Today we're going to talk about a pen that marked several firsts for me. It was my very first gold nib that I had ever uh, acquired. Uh, at the time, it was the most expensive pen that I had ever purchased. Uh, and it was also my first experience buying from a, a Japanese retailer, what, which was uh, interesting to go through as well. And that pen is the Pilot Custom Heritage 92. So what I'm going to do is go over some of the parts and features of the pen, go over some of the things I care for, some of the things I don't care for. Uh, we'll give some measurements, we'll do some size comparisons, and then provide a writing sample. So Pilot is a Japanese company founded in 1918. Uh, it is, uh, so it's almost 100 years old. Uh, it is the largest pen company in Japan, and its subsidiary, Pilot USA, is the uh, third largest pen company in the United States. I believe behind Parker and Cross. I could be mistaken there, but I believe that's correct. Uh, here is the box that it comes in. It's a rather simple box. Uh, inside the box actually was some generic instructions. It says uh, uh, Pilot and Namiki on the front. Uh, the company was founded by a Mr. Namiki. I don't want to butcher his first name, but uh, it was founded as Namiki and then uh, it was later, the uh, brand was later changed to Pilot, but that's why you hear Namiki. It was the name of their founder. Inside we have the pen. And that this is the Custom Heritage 92. Now I've heard some people describe this as simply a Custom Heritage 74 with the ends chopped off. And I don't agree with that assessment. Uh, I'll show you in the size comparisons just the difference of what they look like, but uh, there's variances in virtually every aspect of this pen. So uh, while they are both clear demonstrators, I, I don't feel that's a fair assessment. So we'll start off with the finial, which is, you can see that it is cut off and flat. There is no logo at the end here. Maybe here's a close-up picture of the finial that you can see there. Uh, and then we have a clip that is rather plain but functional. It has a decent amount of spring to it. I've never had any issues with it. Uh, and then inside the cap we have something that I don't particularly care for, which is the, uh, the smoked inner cap. Uh, this is a very nice clear demonstrator pen, then it's a shame that uh, they mucked that up a little bit with uh, having a, a smoke finish on the inner cap when if you had something that was clear, I think it would look that much better and you could really see the nib. Uh, one thing that I do like about the, uh, the cap is, I don't know if you can see in here the, the nib orientation, that it is perfectly straight up and that if you put it in the other way, as far as use the other set of uh, threads, then it's basically perfectly aligned the other direction. So it, it pretty much aligns this way perfectly and upside down perfectly, which I, I like. I think it's kind of neat. Don't know if that's by design or if that's just by chance, but I like it. Uh, that, <clears throat> excuse me, we have a clip band here. And I'll show a picture of this, but on the clip band, there's some little cutouts and uh, little windows, which I, I find are interesting. I don't think they serve much purpose other than just aesthetic, but, uh, but I like them. And then on the clip itself, or on the band itself, it says Custom Heritage 92 Pilot Japan. Uh, there is a small step down, which isn't very sharp at all, to the barrel, and the barrel is perfectly straight. Uh, and then at the very end of the barrel here, we have a very small band, silver colored band. And then we have the piston mechanism. And the piston mechanism is uh, kind of the smoke color as well and a flat finish on the end. Uh, there are something I noticed kind of a theme throughout the entire pen is some ridges. I'll show you here in the cap. You can kind of see, maybe especially when I turn it, that there are some kind of inner ridges right here on the on the cap. Uh, and then we'll look at the section a little more in a little bit, but there are the same ridges on the inside of the section. Right here, there's the same ridges on the inside of the barrel. And then on the piston mechanism, it has the same ridges as well. So I kind of like that there's a, a theme going out, going throughout the pen uh, on each of the uh, each of the parts there. Uh, that it does screw off and that what we find here is a very nice section. 
Uh, it has a very slight taper at the end, a very slight taper. And then there is a silver band here, then a, a very tiny step up to the threads. And that this is a very comfortable pen to hold. I, I find that the, the section isn't too small and that the threads aren't very sharp at all. And uh, I can comfortably hold this pen, whether it's posted or, or not posted. It does post very deeply and securely. Uh, and this pen overall is, is very light. It's, it's really not a, a heavy pen at all. So whether or not you have this posted or not posted, I typically write with this one posted. Doesn't back weight the pen whatsoever, even when it's inked. Sometimes on a piston uh, filler that the mechanism in the back will, will back weight the pen, especially if it is uh, like a brass mechanism, but everything in here is uh, plastic and so uh, it, uh, it doesn't back weight it at all. So now we have this nib here. This is a number five fine medium nib. Here, I'll show some pictures of it. Uh, and you know, I typically like medium nibs or Western medium nibs but I really like some of the Japanese mediums and then this fine medium. This fine medium nib is one of the, my favorite in my collection. Uh, it, it just writes beautifully. Uh, it is not scratchy whatsoever and lays down a, a very, very nice line. It is just really a pleasure to write with. I, I kind of liken this similar to some of the Sailor nibs. Uh, the, the, the Sailor nib as well as this Pilot 14K nib uh, are, are very similar in some of the feel that they provide. Uh, the piston mechanism here uh, is very nice. You can see here, I left this uninked so that we can kind of see the piston mechanism move. It's very smooth. Uh, the pen holds about 1.2 milliliters of ink, so that's plenty of ink in there, and uh, it's nice to see the ink sloshing about. Uh, if you want to maintain your pen, uh, you can disassemble it. The, the feed and the, the nib uh, are friction fit, so you can pull those out. You can see here that in the piston mechanism, there are two flat edges. And in those flat edges is where you could put a wrench. Now, I happen to have a number of Twisby pens and those come with wrenches. So I pulled out one of my metal Twisby wrenches and tried to stick it in here and it did not work. Tried to pull out a different one, thought there might've been some variances in a specific one. Other Twisby wrench did not work. But then I pulled out the plastic Twisby wrench that comes with the Twisby Eco. And lo and behold, that one does fit. So if you'd like to do some work on your Custom Heritage 92, the Twisby Eco wrench is what will help you do that. So, um, you know, I really enjoy this pen. Uh, it, it provides an excellent writing experience that we'll go over here in the writing sample. Um, it is a, a clear plastic resin that is very light, but does not feel cheap. Uh, that it feels like a quality pen and uh, every bit of these parts is, is well made and the nib is extraordinary. Uh, and I, I like this nib very much. I purchased this pen through J Subculture, uh, which is a Japanese retailer that you can go through. It's almost like an Amazon type site. Um, it can be a little daunting making a purchase from them just because a lot of times the, the pens are named differently uh, over in Japan. And in I, I find that their search feature isn't necessarily helpful. So that it, it's good if you know exactly what you're searching for and you put in an exact name. But if you put in something generic, uh, like fountain pen or even pilot or even custom heritage, sometimes you're just gonna get a wide variety of things that, that do not relate to exactly what you want. So if you have a, a model number, or a specific name that is the specific name they use in Japan, that's the best way to search for something here. Uh, for US retailers, I've seen this pen everywhere from $220 down to $133. And uh, at J Subculture, that you were able to pick it up for $110. I think it was actually $108 at the time I purchased it. Uh, I know that some people have come some concerns about purchasing from overseas and whether or not the warranty is still valid. Uh, for my Custom Heritage 92, um, I had it for a while and then I was actually doing some work on the, the inner cap. I, was, I had taken a flight and some ink had gotten behind the inner cap and so I was trying to repair that on my own. And like a, an idiot, I accidentally cracked 
some of the uh, the cap there and so i actually contacted pilot usa and mentioned to them that i had purchased it overseas and i even was upfront in the fact that i uh, had done the damage myself i didn't try to accuse their their cap of being faulty or anything like that uh, and they said send it in and so i sent it to them uh, here at pilot usa and they exchanged my cap and gave me a new cap at no cost whatsoever. So uh, even though they knew that I had not purchased it in the U.S., that they had no problem in that specific case of uh, giving me a new cap at no cost. So I greatly appreciated that. So um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to do some uh, measurements, then we'll do a size comparison, and then we'll provide a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Pilot Custom Heritage 92. Uh, the first thing I'll show is this is a Pilot Custom Heritage 74. And as I had mentioned in the review that there has been some comments that people felt this was uh, very similar with just the ends chopped off. And I, I don't find that to be the case at all. Uh, you can see that uh, the clips are significantly different. Uh, the uh, the barrel is actually a little bit longer on the CH-74, uh, and while they're both uh, very good pens, and while they're, uh, they're both clear demonstrators, that they think there's a significant difference between them. And there's some other variances as well. Uh, here is a uh, Pilot 823, which is their vacuum filler, uh, and then here is a Pilot Vanishing Point. And then for some other size comparisons, we have a Mont Blanc 146 and then a Pelican M1000, which is going to be significantly larger. So here we go with a writing sample for the Pilot Custom Heritage 92. And this is a fine medium nib. Now, this particular nib, uh, the fine mediums are only, or typically only available through uh, Japanese retailers or only available in the Japanese market. Uh, I have found uh, that retailers like JetPens do carry the fine mediums, uh, but most, uh, most US retailers do not. Uh, and uh, I really, really like this fine medium. I typically like a, a Western medium is kind of my, my main desired nib that I, I have, uh, but there, there's just something about, something about this fine fine medium uh, and the uh, the mediums uh, of the Japanese nibs like these pilot gold ones as well as the sailors that just have a level of precision that uh, I really really like and plus I, I have a tendency to find western finds to be a little more scratchy uh, but the the Japanese mediums which kind of equate to the western finds have a tendency to just offer a little bit more feedback rather than scratch and so I, I, I like them a, a great deal. Uh, the ink that I'm using here is Anderson Pens Robin's Egg. And this is what the ink looks like. Uh, it is uh, it's you know it's a color that I really like. It's somewhat comparison comparable to uh, like the Pelican Turquoise, or um, you know here's Compeki, which is going to be a little bit darker. But uh, but I do like this uh, this Anderson's Robin uh, Pen's Robin's Egg. Uh, it, it's a very well behaved ink. This is the bottle that it comes in. Uh, I believe that it's actually been discontinued. So if you uh, are able to get one then that's great. I know they have some other inks that they have available on Anderson's site, but uh, this was one of the more popular ones and I, I enjoy the color, it's nice. So here we go with some more writing. Lazy dog. Uh, and as I said, that this, while this is a, uh, a 14K nib, uh, it, it is decently smooth with a little bit of feedback, and, and you can get quite a lot of flex out of this pen. I wouldn't push it too hard, but you can get uh, some decent flex to it, and the, uh, the Robin's Egg has some nice pooling to it. 
And starting off with just no pressure whatsoever, you can see that you can get a decent amount there. Uh, the ink flow for this pen uh, really has not been an issue. It's something that uh, I'd say is on the medium side. And in regard to reverse writing, it's very scratchy. Oh, boy. And it's actually kind of giving up here near the end, but uh, I would not recommend that. Uh, and then we have some quick writing, so for some initials. And it performs very well and keeps up. And I've never had any issues with the feed in this pen at all. So the Pilot Custom Heritage 92. Uh, I enjoy this pen a, a great deal. Uh, as I had mentioned previously, it was a, a number of firsts for me and I don't regret the purchase at all. I really like it. Uh, it's a very nice clear demonstrator and, and the fine medium nib is, is very special and, and something I, I enjoy and one of my favorite nibs in my collection. So thanks for watching and we'll talk to you later.